Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss acyclovir. What is this drug acyclovir? This is one of the antiviral agent classified as antiherpes agent. This drug can be easily identified with the suffix cyclovir. We have few of the drugs with similar suffix such as gancyclovir, famcyclovir. All these are the antiviral agents acting against herpes infections. Now, acyclovir can be used in the treatment of herpes zoster infection, which produces the shingles. Similarly, varicella zoster infection, which produces chicken pox and gentle herpes infections. In all these herpes viral infections, acyclovir can be used. But this drug is not effective against cytomegalovirus infections. Within the name of this drug, the prefix indicates acyclo which indicates that this drug is not having any cyclic ring. So acyclovir is a acyclic analog without any cyclic side chain. Guanine is one of the purine which can be attached to the ribose such that it can produce guanosine which acts as nucleoside and involved in the DNA synthesis. But here acyclovir is having some structural similarity with the guanosine. It's also having the guanine moiety. But this guanine moiety is attached with a acyclic chain. It is having a open chain and no cyclic ring is attached. That's why it is called as acyclovir. Now acyclovir, because of some structural similarity with the guanosine, it can replace the function of guanosine within the DNA synthesis. But it cannot act like guanosine so that it can inhibit the DNA synthesis. In this way, acyclovir inhibits the function of DNA polymerase particularly related to deoxygonosine triphosphate. Now let us explore how this drug acts and what is the exact mechanism. Acyclovir can enter into the infected cells. So initially it can enter into the cells, but it is not in the active form. It should be phosphorylated such that it can be incorporated into the DNA. In order to be incorporated into the DNA, it should be converted into triphosphate form. So the first enzyme that is required for phosphorylation of acyclovir is the thymidine kinase. But this thymidine kinase is present in the viral cell. So those cells which are infected with the virus, they can activate the acyclovir. Now viral thymidine kinase can interact with the acyclovir so that it is going to be converted into acyclovir monophosphate. Still this is not the active form to be incorporated into the DNA. It should be converted into acyclovir triphosphate. Now further steps of phosphorylation can be mediated by host kinases. So thymidine kinase present within the host now can phosphorylate the acyclic monophosphate into the triphosphate. By action of this host enzyme now it is going to be converted into acyclovir triphosphate. This is the complete active form of the acyclovir. In this triphosphate form it can compete with the guanosine triphosphate and it can be incorporated within the growing viral DNA chain. Now, during the DNA synthesis, base pairing will take place. Step is mediated by DNA polymerase enzyme. Now, here acyclovir triphosphate is going to be incorporated within the DNA chain, but it cannot function like guanosine, so that the DNA polymerase activity is going to be inhibited, leading to inhibition of DNA synthesis. In this way, acyclovir acts as anti-herpes agent. But in order to produce its antiviral action, it should be converted into monophosphate form by thymidine kinase, which is present in the viral cell. In the cytomegalovirus, this thymidine kinase is not present. That's why acyclovir is ineffective in the cytomegalovirus infections. Even the resistance developed towards the treatment of acyclovir is again due to the mutation of viral thymidine kinase enzyme. Since this enzyme is required for activation of acyclovir, any mutation of this enzyme may result in the resistance developed towards the acyclovir. Now let us see the precautions of this drug. One of the important precautions of acyclovir is that this drug should be carefully given in the patients with any renal dysfunction. So care should be taken in such patients because acyclovir can be excreted through the renal system where it can be deposited into the renal tubules. So within the renal tubules, it can form few of the crystals which may produce the renal tubular damage. And in the patients with already renal dysfunction, this drug produces further renal damage. That's why whenever this acyclovir is prescribed, sufficient hydration should be maintained because the water can reduce the formation of crystals 
within the renal tubules. Similarly, second precaution is on the adverse effects produced by acyclovir. This drug can produce some nausea and vomiting, headache, dizziness, and some diarrhea, which may result in the discontinuation of the therapy. So, if any troublesome adverse effects are observed, then this drug should be carefully used. Now, let us the chemical nature of this drug. So, this is the structure of acyclovir. Here, we can observe the pure ring system. Let us give the numbering. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then 7, 8, 9. So, this is the pure ring system with 6th position ketone group. So, we can write this as 1H purine 6O. And second position is having the amine group, so 2 amino. Ninth position, it is having acyclic chain. That's why it's called acyclovir. So, we can simply write the chain at the ninth position as 9-hydroxyethoxymethyl. That is the complete name of acyclovir. What are the side effects? The important side effects of this drug mainly include headache, nausea, diarrhea, dizziness, confusion, and it can also produce some myalgia, muscle pains, anemia, and angioedema resulting in the swelling of lips, tongue can be observed with this drug. How it is given? This drug is available in different doses forms. It is available as tablets. It is also available as capsules, even as oral solution. Even it can be given by IV infusion. And the dose of the drug depends on the type of clinical indication. For the treatment of herpes zoster infections, this drug is given at a dose of 800 mg given 5 times for 7 to 10 days. So, within 4 hours gap, 800 mg of the drug can be given 5 times daily. Similarly, for the treatment of genital herpes infections, it can be given at a dose of 200 mg given 5 times, again for 5 to 10 days. And finally, for treatment of chickenpox, this drug is given at a dose of 800 mg given 4 times for 5 days. In the treatment of chickenpox, the early treatment with the acyclovir gives the positive results. So, that's about this drug acyclovir, which is a acyclic analog of gonosin. So, this acyclovir should be initially activated within the host cell by viral thymidine kinase. Once it is converted into monophosphate, then it can be converted into triphosphate by host thymidine kinases. In this triphosphate form, it can be incorporated within the growing chain of DNA where it can inhibit the activity of DNA polymerase enzyme resulting in the inhibition of DNA synthesis. This acyclovir should be carefully given in the patients with any renal dysfunction or in those patients who are taking nephrotoxic drugs, this drug should be carefully given. Diarrhea, nausea and dizziness are the important side effects that can be produced by acyclovir. So that's about this drug, acyclovir. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.